Thingy dongy. Yes. Howdy, Heidi. How are you, mate? Ready. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. That's better. What's been happening? Everything cool? Yeah, everything's great. Yeah. Yes. How's the connection? Very nice tonight, yeah. Just getting my act together here. Do you want to prissy yourself up a bit? <sighs> <laughs> I'm ready. You got the fan on? No, but I've got it right here and it's plugged in. <laughs> Do you need it on? No, my nose has just gone weird in the last five minutes because I was going after a fly and then I breathed in this <clears> fly spray. And, oh. oh. So. You got a bit of paper there to fan it so you can cool <laughs> off? <laughs> so you look... So you look pretty for everyone? Ah, uh, I'm all right. I'm okay. How are yeah. you, mate? <laughs> Getting there. Yeah. Getting there. Yeah. It's a nice mm. mirror you got behind you there. It's great. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> if it was slightly <laughs> tilted, I could even see myself. You noticed? <laughs> yeah. It matches the chair. Yeah. It's lovely. Well, what about Adam? Yeah. That was fascinating. Yeah. Was, I thought it was wonderful to hear what he had to say. Yeah. He's very nervous, isn't he? Yeah. I think he's been uh, criticised from a lot of the Messianic community and that's a lot of the stuff that goes down. And, and cause How of the, wonderful that'll make him grow. Yeah. So everything he wants to do, step forward, he wants to make sure it's technically and scripturally perfect, which is a little bit unrealistic, but... What am I going to do then? Pick stuff out. <laughs> I'm, I'm neither technical or <laughs> oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Well, somebody like him, yeah. with all the knowledge he's grown up with, is nervous. Mm. We don't have to worry, do we? No. No. It's great. Yeah. But I really think he's got a lot to say to young people. Same. See what I'm doing, Adam? How you going, mate, anyway? You just open your gob and you say what you feel. This is Off The Cuff. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Off The Cuff. Coming from Atherton Tablelands, the beautiful Atherton Tablelands, far north Queensland. Welcome to our show. How are you all feeling? I hope you got your dander up because we're going somewhere tonight. We're still in the head. We haven't left the head and come down the neck yet. There's still more to come about the head. The head's a very busy place, isn't it? And brothers and sisters, we really have to talk to the body. We really have to talk to those that are Nazarim that have been immersed. When you come through the immersion, you come out the other side clean, washed clean from all your sins. You are clean. And, but we still have habits. And Yahusha wants to change those habits. And he's going to chastise us and correct us and show us the way to go as we read the Torah. He wants a clean bride. And he's endeavouring to make us become that. So we have to talk about what he's doing to us, what he's saying to the body, and we have to come up to the standard that he's put forth you know the scriptures were written for us in the last days. As we go through some of the scriptures here tonight, you're going to understand that the people early in the early times couldn't have understood what we understand today. And it was all written for this time. We are in the greatest, most exciting, wonderful time the world has ever known. And I want you to have a look at the people, the characters that are in these scriptures tonight and how they affect us in our time here and now, how the word is still relevant. 
and you think of all the incredible technological things that man has created. But when you look and you see that Yahushua created everything before he knew everything that would happen, and yet his word, as ancient and as is as it is, is relevant for our health and well-being for today in this crazy, bizarre, technological, miraculous era we're living in. Yet his word is far superior and surpasses all the wisdom and knowledge that man has. And that's what we're looking at tonight, brothers and sisters. Yahushua definitely wants to speak to his body. You know he's out there. He's also in our hearts. And through his word, he wants to speak to us and is speaking to us. It's amazing that the word has life in it and it has light. And as we have the spirit in us and we come into looking at the word, everything becomes alive and we can see, we get the light of the wonderful knowledge of our Creator, and He wants to give that to us. He wants to prepare us for what's going to come on the world. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're in a time of preparation now, brothers and sisters. We really need to look at what He's saying and come out of the pathetic mindset we are all in. We are in the most pathetic, ridiculous Childish, idiotic mindset. All of us, the whole body. That's right from the older brother down to the new beginners, new believers. We're all in a pathetic mindset. And it has to be washed clean out of our mind and replaced with the Torah. And those that are going to go all the way are going to get the rewards. Okay. Well, let's start. We're going to look at breath. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to look at breath today. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got bad breath? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it all depends on what we eat and how we live, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Um, but that may be not the breath we're talking about tonight. Everyone's got a breath but it may be something different that we're talking about tonight. Okay, let's go to Acts 17. You're very loud tonight. Sorry? I said you're very loud tonight. In my oh, ear. sorry. I'll turn it down. Maybe, turn it down. Maybe my earphones up too loud. Okay. So no, I'm, I'm excited again, I guess. That's great. That's fine. Is your computer pushed back as far as it can go? Right back. I'm leaning a bit forward. Oh, that's all right. It's a small room. It's fine. It's no problem. What was As the speak with a soft voice. <laughs> what was the first scripture? Now listen. Now listen. I want Acts 17. I want to see you going for it, Adam. Doesn't matter how old you are, mate. Everyone has to start somewhere and it's not always perfect. But Yahushua will get, give you something, will give you lots of things to do. I really want you to look at, you're a young man, and I want you to look at, I've got a son that's 24. Maybe you could reach him, Adam, if you don't think about yourself and don't try to make everything perfect. But my, my son and his wife are only 23 and 24. And maybe you could reach them as a young person. They see someone younger than them. How old's Adam, Mark? Uh, I, I think he might be 21, 22, maybe 23. And they see somebody that's entrenched in Torah with the knowledge that you have, Adam. That's going to show them something. I would really appreciate it if you talked about issues, what you feel about what young people have to confront in this world today. And I'm, I'm sure that your knowledge would be vital and I'm sure a lot of young people will tune in, Adam. It doesn't matter 
as Mark explained to you, when you get on the internet and you look at YouTube, how small is our contribution in YouTube? The more people we can get on, on board going for it and flooding the airwaves, well, then there's going to be some results. More people are going to see it. We're going to find our brothers and sisters that are still out there lost. And you can be an important contribution, Adam. So don't worry about yourself, mate. Just get in there and go. Look at me. I'm having a go. We can all have a go. Yeah? yeah. What do you reckon, Marky? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's start with Act 17. <clears throat> and having passed through Ampipolis and, Apollio and Apollonia, Apollonia, is that better? Apollonia. They came to Thessalonic, where there was a congregation of the Yehudim. Okay, so this is Shaul. And according to his practice, Shaul went in unto them and for three Sabbaths was reasoning with them from the Scriptures. So wherever Shaul went, he would go to a synagogue and on the Sabbath, and he, because that's where they were teaching and he would reason with the people that were there. So he went to the Yehudim. He's going to the Jews first here, wherever he went, he would do that. Explaining and pointing out that the Messiah had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this is the Messiah, Yahusha, who I proclaim to you, whom I proclaim to you. So they were reasoning with him, he's pointing out in the scriptures, you know, can't you see that, you know, this is Messiah? Like when we read, we can see in the, uh, the um, scriptures, not the Messianics, but in the scriptures we can see everything that was pointing to the Messiah. We understand that today because we have the knowledge. And some of them did because it hadn't happened then, but now it did. And some of them did believe, and a large number of the worshipping Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Shah, Earl and Sila. So people are coming in. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that Yahushua wants us through this to share the word with people. That's what he did. And this environment that Shah Earl is in is very much like it is today. No one believes. They hate religion and it's furious. So this is what we want to do, go around and say it. But the Yehudim who did not believe, having become envious, took some of the wicked men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and came upon the house of Jason. <laughs> Jason's in there. I missed it now. And we're seeking. Oh, yeah. And we're seeking to bring them out to the people. But not finding them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers to the city rulers crying out. They have turned the world upside down and have come here too, whom Jason had received. And, and all of them are acting contrary to the dogmas of Caesar, saying there is another sovereign, Yahusha. Okay, so if you're going to speak out, you're going to get opposition. Hmm? Yeah. But you'll always be safe in Yahusha. Yeah. <clears throat> Lest they get you and they kill you, but all they kill is the body. It's all right. You're on screen. I'm not I'm all fine. I know, but you can cut that, can't you? <laughs> yeah, I can cut that. So you look pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, why don't you leave it on, Mark? <laughs> honk, honk. Honk, honk. And they troubled the crowd and the city rulers when they heard this. So they're out there stirring up the city rulers, stirring up. It's a lie. It's against the truth. It's always going to become lie, liars and troublemakers against the truth. And this is the Yehudim. This is the older brother doing this to Shaul. 
<coughs> verse 9, And when they had received a pledge from Jason and the rest, they let them go. And the brothers immediately sent Shoal and Sila away by night to Beroia, who having come, went into the congregation of the Yehudim. Okay, so he went to Beroia, and when he got there, what did he do? He went to the congregation. See? Now, these were more noble than those in Thessaloniki, the better people than the ones he'd just come from, who received the word with great eagerness and searched the scriptures daily. If these words were so, so they're checking it all out, they're looking at the scriptures to see about the Messiah, then many of them truly believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, decent men, women as well as men. So if you speak the truth, things are going to happen. And we have this incredible pressure against us in society not to speak the truth. So we've clammed up. <clears throat> That's why nothing's happening in the body. That's why no one respects Natsurim, because all they are is bickering amongst themselves at the moment. They're like children. If you're bickering at each other, are you not still yet children? So we have to not bicker. We have to come to that place where we're going to speak out the truth. Things will happen. That's why nothing's happening, because people are afraid to speak out. I think I'd rather be dead, not because I'm a big mouth, but I'd rather be dead than not have this in me, because I was dead without this. So I think I'd rather be speaking the truth wherever I am, whatever, than this. And thank everyone very much for their prayers for Matthew. He's much better. He's out of hospital and he's on the way again. But he's still very angry. <clears throat> His wife, Lisa, has come back into the fold and she's very excited about being with Yahushua and she's trusting in Yahushua more and more. So that's a wonderful breakthrough from your prayers. And keep praying for Matthew, my son, because he's having a problem and I don't mind saying it. <coughs> Verse 13. And when the Yehudim from Thessalonica came to know that the word of Elohim was proclaimed by Shaul at Beroia, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Now this is fellow believers. This is what's going to happen to us. And then immediately the brothers sent Shaul away to go to the sea. But, but both Sila and Timothy stayed there. And those who arranged for Shaul brought him to Athens. And receiving a command from Sila and Timothy to join him as soon as possible, they departed. Verse 16. But when Shaul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred up within him when he saw that the city was utterly idolatrous. Wherever you go, brothers and sisters, today, everything is utterly idolatrous. Therefore, indeed, he was reasoning in the congregation with the Yehudim and with the Gentile worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who met there. <clears throat> and some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him and some were saying, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of strange, mighty ones because to them he brought the good news, Yahushua and the resurrection. So they laid hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus saying, are we able to know what this fresh teaching is of which you speak. Now, Mark, what's an area pagus? If you don't know, don't guess. <clears throat> no, I don't know. Well, I brought him into the area pagus. Who, who dragged him in? <clears throat> the people that were there, the ones that were stirred up. Yeah, I don't know. Because no. he was, he's bringing the word. Don't know. He's teaching about the resurrection. I can guess, but I don't know. <coughs> okay. Do you know anything about this circumstance about the area of Pagus? Not at all. 
Right. Well, there's a... Um, it's called the Areopagus Sermon. It's famous throughout the ages. Wow. This is the sermon that Shaul is going to bring. And anyway, out there, do you guys know it either? Do you know what, what this is all about? This is one of the most famous sermons that Shaul ever spoke. Do you know that out there? Did you know that? I'm sure you didn't. <clears throat> and there's even a painting by Raphael about it. So that's centuries ago, Mark. Mm. Famous painter Raphael painted, talked, painted about this sermon. It's so famous, Mark. So let's see where this sermon goes, what it, what it says. It's famous. Yeah. <clears throat> the area of Pagus... Um, it, it's a rock in Greece called the Rock of Ares, A-R-E-S, which is a G-O-D. And um, it's where he was tried by the G-O-D-S for murder. And this big rock, they even built a temple there and it became the seat. And it refers to the judicial body of aristocratic origin that formed the higher court of modern Greece. So this is where all the courts came from, through pagan philosophies, through a stupid... Um, Idol. <clears throat> no, what's it called? Um, not theology. Philosophy. Uh, yeah, stupid... Um, Traditions and, uh, oh, the words on the end of my tongue, I can't say. But anyway, this is, this is where it all came from, um, where um, our law courts started from. And obviously it came through from Babylon as well, but went through the Greeks and it's been passed on to Rome. And now our whole society is riddled with this sort of justice and this sort of a court, and you can see that it's, um, <clears throat> it's formed, um, it's a judicial body of aristocratic origin, and they form the higher court. So it's to do with rich people and money, and that's still going on today, isn't it? Yeah. That's still happening in our world today. And this sermon is the most dramatic and fullest speech in the missionary career of Shaul. You didn't know that, did you? No, no. I'm not talking to you, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right, mate. <laughs> but, you know, most people of today wouldn't even know about that and wouldn't even know that that's where our, our law courts came from. It was passed down into the Roman era and the church have taken that into their laws and they've made themselves, made laws about it and lifted themselves up in a place of wealth where they are controlling the world. And what they're doing is totally against scripture. Mm. All comes from this Areopagus. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> <clears throat> Going on to verse 20, for you are bringing some strange matters to our ear, to our ears. We wish then to know what these mean. For all the Athenians and the strangers living here spent their leisure time in doing naught but to speak or to hear what is fresh. That sort of sounds like Christianity, doesn't it, mate? You know, they're looking for a, a new fresh word, and it, someone writes a book about it, and everyone writes a book about it, and there's songs about it, and CDs and tapes, and it goes on and on, a fresh word. It's very, very much in, in the Christian life today, and you can see looking here, way back when we look into the word that was just through the story of what happened to Shaul, you can see that process is still controlling our environment today. And it's totally pagan 
and it's built on mythology. That's what the word I was looking for. It's all mythology. It's made up by men. All these deities that they gave names to, it's all made up by men. And they're carved idols, you know. It's yeah. just pathetic. And that's, that's what where people are being judged and murdered about by these judicial systems. And it's all to do with the wealthy. And they rule the roost. And we're just their servants in society. You know, once you buy your house and you buy your land, you've still got to pay tax on it. You've still got to give, 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 give. We're just slaves. There's no freedom or peace. And the rules and the laws that they put on us are lies. And we have to pay out all the time. But isn't it wonderful that we can be here incognito knowing there's going to be an end? Yahushua's going to bring an end to all this madness that we're living. And we're going to a place there where there'll be no more tears or sorrow or hurt, just love, no pain. It'll just be wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 22, And having stood in the midst of the Areopagus, that's the whole um, uh, ecclesia there, it was called the ecclesia too. Look where that comes from, the Greek word ecclesia. Yeah, that's the, that's the circus, isn't it? Yeah. Having stood in the midst of the Areopagus, Shaul said, Men of Athens, Roman, friends, Romans and countrymen. <laughs> Give me your Men of Athens. <laughs> Yeah. I see that you are very religious in every matter. For passing through and observing the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown mighty one. How incredible that Yahushua led him there and what a fabulous way to bring it all in. <clears throat> Not knowing then whom you worship, I make him known to you. How about that? Yeah. How brilliant is that? <coughs> How easy is that for him? Yeah. How clever is the knowledge and the wisdom of Yahushua? I make him known to you. Verse 24, Yahuwah who made the world and is introducing the name of the Creator, who made the world and all that is in it. This one being, master of heaven and earth, does not dwell in dwellings made with hands. How amazing is all that? He's just saying this right before the council of judgment. <clears throat> Nor is he served with men's hands as if needing any, himself giving to all life and breath. What are we looking up tonight? Breath. There's the key word, giving life and breath and all else. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, having ordained before beforehand the times and the boundaries of their dwelling. That's a blowout. What a word to say. Fancy being that free and that at liberty. Adam, what do you think? It's just so easy. You can just say this stuff. I mean, I'm not coming to you tonight with any stuff from me. What have I got to say to you? Absolutely nothing. But this is wonderful. This is what you can say to people, or this is what you can say. Verse 27, to seek the master, if at least they would reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. What an incredible understanding showing the people there that they could reach out. Same as today, brothers and sisters. You need to reach out and come out of this pathetic mindset that we're caught up in. <clears throat> and he's not far from us. For in him we live. We have to come into him. He's the body. He's the head. We're the body. We have to come into him. For in him we live and move and are. 
So this world and this sea and the sky and the winds, we are in him. It's his. As also some of your own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. So he's using their poets and telling them what their poets have said. Then look what he does with it. Now then, since we are the offspring of Elohim, we should not think that the Elohim the Elohim is like gold or silver or stone. How clever is this? An image made by the skill and thought of man. Truly then, having overlooked these times of ignorance, Elohim now commands all men everywhere to repent. You can say this. You can say this if you present it in the right way. Because he has set a day on which he is going to judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. We're coming to the end of that time. We're coming to the time, that time that he's talking about 2,000 years ago. We're coming to that time now. It's very close. <clears throat> and here he is, Yahushua's already risen, and he's telling them, that the world's going to be judged by him. And it's been appointed, having given proof of this to all by raising him from the dead. This is the proof that he's coming back to judge the world. So we better be ready. And it's soon, it's coming. And hearing of the resurrection of the dead, some indeed mocked while others said, we shall hear you again concerning this. And so Shaul went out from among them, but some men joined him and believed among, the Dion among them Dionysius, is it? Dionysius, Dionysius, and, Arapa and Arap the Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. I knew um, a solicitor who, who, whose name was Damaris, I'd never heard of it before. She was one of my clients in the city. <clears throat> so there we have the famous Areopagus sermon. You didn't know about that, did you, mate? I'm sure lots of people didn't know about that. There's even a painting by Raphael about it. And it's just famous throughout the ages, those words that he said, that sermon is just amazing where it leads us to. And we got it from looking up breath. Yeah. Hey? Right? Look at the teaching that surrounds the parts of the body. He's speaking to the body. He's teaching us about the body and what he, what he wants us to know and how he wants us to be and what we have to achieve. And he says... We can do it. Even a child can do it. We can get there. But it's up to us. The next one is language. And that's in Zephaniah chapter 3. And that's page 629, Mark. Yeah. I thought that might help. <clears throat> now I want you to think of uh, as we go through this the word we're looking for is language as we go through this one brothers and sisters I want us to look at Israel what she did and what the whore is today keeping that in your mind as we go what Israel did, and she was a bride, but she was divorced because of her behaviour. And also looking at what the whore is today and what she declares about herself. Okay, chapter 3. <clears throat> and we're looking for the word? Uh, language. Language. <clears throat> <clears throat> Woe to her who is rebellious and defiled, 
the oppressing city. Who do you think of there? Oh, Rome. Oppression. Well, that's good. It's really talking about Israel. <laughs> she did not obey the voice. She did not accept instruction. See, this is what we need to do. She did not trust in Yahuwah. She did not draw near to her Elohim. Her rulers in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They shall leave no bone until morning. Her prophets are reckless, treacherous men. Her priests have profaned the set-apart place. They have done violence to the Torah. How about that? It's the same as the whore today, isn't it? Yeah. And the whore is Christianity. They've done violence to the word. They've changed it and added to it. And we need not be afraid to say these things. Yahuwah is righteous in her midst. So Yahuwah is right in her midst and he's righteous. Yeah? Mm. Even though she's doing all this. He does no unrighteousness. <clears throat> morning by morning, he brings his right ruling to light. It has been lacking, yet the unrighteous one knows no shame. Yeah? I have cut off nations in their corner towers. Sorry, I've cut off nations. Their corner towers are in ruins. I have made their streets deserted with no one passing by. Their cities are destroyed without man, without inhabitant. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I just want to say how many archaeological sites are they digging up and they have found have been destroyed and yet it's never mentioned why or how, hardly ever. And if it is mentioned that they have some other reason than Yahushua destroying it. He sent armies, he sent earthquakes all throughout society. We should not be, you know, amazed when we see all these ruins. We should know that Yahushua has not been happy and they have been destroyed because of their behaviour, because they're not obedient. And because of their idolatry and their wickedness and their evil and their wars, he just says, that's it, I'm fed up with this splat. And that's how he is. That's how he's been. That's his character. People say, oh, that's just the Old Testament. That's all dead now. He's not like that now. He's a G-O-D of love. Well, I tell you, love smacks you hard. Verse 7, <clears throat> I have said, only fear me, except, in, see, they won't accept instruction. And her dwelling would not be cut off. All that I have appointed for her, but they rose up early, they corrupted all their deeds, sun worship. Therefore, wait for me, declares Yahuwah, until the day I rise up for the plunder. So it's got a little line down the side there, see? We're going into future prophecy now. So there's going to be a day that he's going to rise up for plunder. And if we're not ready and if we're not clean and he comes, we're going to get plundered because of our disobedience. It tells you there they won't be obedient, so they get plundered. Same's going to happen in the end because this is prophecy now about the future. <clears throat> For my judgment is to gather nations to assemble rains, to pour out on them my rage, all my burning wrath. For by the fire of my jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed. This is what he's going to do. And this is way back, way back, way back in Zephaniah. Way, 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 way back. And speaking about today, what's going to happen. Verse 9, For then I shall turn unto the peoples 
a clean. Lip. See the B beside the lip there, Ma? Yep. What's it say at the bottom? Ah, all language. So we're going to have a clean language. Mm. Not a defiled language. Not a language that's riddled with paganism. And that's what we've got through the Greeks and the Romans. You know, their philosophers and so forth, their law courts. Look what's happening to Greece now. It's crumbling. That's judgment, isn't it? See? So there's the, the word we're looking for, language. Look what's surrounding the teaching surrounding language. And we're in the middle of prophecy now. <clears throat> so we're going to get, For then I shall turn unto the peoples a clean lip, so, they, so that they all can, so that they all call on the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one shoulder. This is where we have to go, brothers and sisters, to be one shoulder working together. From beyond the rivers... Of Cush, my worshippers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. Hallelujah. In that day you shall not be put to shame for any of your deeds in which you have transgressed against me. For Isn't that talking about now, how we get cleansed from all our sins? Yeah. For then I shall remove from your midst your proud, exalting ones, and you shall no more be haughty in my set-apart mountain. How wonderful. They're so arrogant. We don't want to follow their example. They're arrogant. They're out of place. Yahushua hates it. But I shall leave in your, in your midst an oppressed and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of Yahuwah. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no falsehood. Now, brothers and sisters, do you do unrighteousness and speak falsehood? I'll let you fill in that gap there of time. Nor is a tongue of deceit found in their mouth. Do you lie? Do you deceive? This is not the proper conduct that the body should have. So if you have a brother or a sister and you lie or deceive to, the, to them, you're in big trouble with Yahushua. He doesn't want that in his body. That's not the behaviour of the Nazareth. That's not the behaviour of the bride. Getting it straight. For they shall feed their flocks and lie down and none to be none to frighten them. How wonderful will that be? Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Yahuwah has turned aside your judgments. He has faced your enemy, the sovereign of Israel. Yahuwah is in your midst. Hallelujah for that, eh? No longer need you fear evil. In that day it shall be given to Jerusalem. Do not fear. Zion, do not let your hands be weak. This is so encouraging for us to move on in the word, not to be afraid, but to speak these things out. It's time to rejoice and celebrate. Yahuwah, your Elohim, is in your midst. Is he not? Where two or more gather, yeah. am I not there? <clears throat> he's in our midst, all over the world. He's in the midst of his body. He's mighty to save. He rejoices over you with joy. That's how he feels about you. He is silent in his love. He rejoices over you with singing. I shall gather those who grieve about the appointed place who are among you to whom its reproach is a burden. See, I am dealing with all those afflicting you at that time. You don't have to worry about what people do or say, Adam, 
just get in there and share what you've got. The young people today need to hear this stuff, need to hear a young person say the truth on the airwaves. I mean, how many people are real? How many hits are you going to get at first, Adam? You just think about it. So we need to put more and more out there so you get hit after hit. Yeah? The body's in a shocking state and how wonderful to see a young man dedicated his life to Yahusha and moving in the spirit. I'm sure your father is so proud of you, mate. I am. I'd love my son to be like that. And I shall save the lame and gather those who are cast out and I shall give them for a praise and for a name in all the earth where they were put to shame. At that time I shall bring you in, even at the time I gather you, for I shall give you for a name and for a praise among all the peoples of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said Yahuwah. And I've written under here when I was reading this years ago, Oh, please shout for, do for joy, daughter of Zion. Shout, O oh Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart. What a wonderful prophecy. prophecy. It's all about to happen. And this is a few years back when I wrote that. I was so excited over this prophecy. And I hope that you are too tonight. He's giving us a look into what he's going to do. Time is short to him. Our time is short. And he's coming, brothers and sisters, and he's going to do all this, and he's telling us he wants his body in order. Not in dreamland, but in touch with him, hearing his voice and doing Torah. You're going to see wonderful things happen if you just step out. Step out, Adam. Go for it. We love you, mate. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you got from just... The language, looking up language, which is part of the head. Language comes out of the head, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, look at all the things we've been through so far and we're still in the head. <laughs> hey? Yeah. Amazing. Now, thinking is the next one. Yeah. Does the head think? Oh, yeah. So... Let's go to Romans 12. <clears throat> you got it, mate? Yes, sir. I'm sure everybody else has got it then. So we're looking at the word thinking. Thinking. Think. Mm. The word think. Where do you think this is going to take us, eh? Interesting. How are we going for time? Yeah, we're, we're uh, just uh, about 50... Minutes, where are <clears throat> well, I might make this the last one. Whatever you want, mate. Yeah, I think that, because you don't want it too long. All right. It's a good way to finish. Verse 1, chapter, Romans chapter 12. I call upon you, therefore, brothers, through the compassion of Elohim, to present your bodies a living offering. Set apart, well-pleasing to Elohim, this is your reasonable worship. Have you actually presented your body as a living offering? That means continual, doesn't it? It's alive, it's living, it's an offering that's continual. That you will let him have you in any circumstance that you're involved in. You will bring Torah in. You will stand for Torah. This is the sort of bride he wants, a loving bride that's going to love him and stick by him. Are you? Have you actually, have you done that, Mark? Have you actually presented your body as a living offering? Have you actually consciously done that? No, I haven't thought of it like that. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure many other people haven't either. But it's time we took it serious, mate, isn't it? Yeah. He's coming. It's time we took this very serious. Our bodies, he owns our bodies. He owns everything in the world. We live and breathe in him and are 
our being is in him. He wants us to see that. But yet he gives us the freedom, the free will to choose. How gracious is that? Yeah. Verse 2. And do, do not be conformed to this world. Well, we saw in the other teaching where, the, where it's all coming from. It's all pagan mythology made up by men to control other men. They're all lies. The whole, whole of Christianity is totally deceived. The whole of the older brother is deceived a lot. Yeah. They still have good points and they're going to come together eventually. But they're deceived. They're not getting the fullness. They're not getting the, the life in them and the, the passion and the compassion for others. You know, he wants us to have compassion for others to reach out. He wants us to be alive and full of love. Well, you can't be it unless you're obedient. And you have to take all these lessons bit by bit, step by step, and apply them in your life to get the reality of being alive. <clears throat> Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Your mindset has to be renewed out of paganism into Torah, yeah? Yeah. So that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. So you, we, have to prove what is his perfect desire by applying these instructions. We have to actually commit to them and, and take them on board and practice them to become alive in them. Yeah. Verse 3, For I say through the favour which has been given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think. There's the word. Not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Well, that's what's going on in the church, in the assembly, isn't it? Yeah. You know? No, this is the wrong word. <laughs> that's what's going on in the circus anyway. Mm -hmm. but that's what's happening. Everybody's thinking more of themselves than what they should be because you can't be conscious if you're that engrossed in yourself, you can't be conscious to be have compassion for others, can you? No. But to think soberly. So if you're not thinking that way, you would be sober. But if you're thinking more of yourself, you're drunk. And where does the drunkenness come from? Whose cup? The whore. And that's what she is advocating. That's what she is teaching and trying to keep everybody in that place so they are drunk on themselves. She's trying to keep them there and so they don't get to the sob sobriety of the truth where that you just went, there's no way you want to lift yourself up. You're waiting for Yahushua. You're not really lifting yourself up. You're waiting for what he's going to say, where he's going to lead us and guide us. And only by knowing the Torah can you hear him speaking to you. In every circumstance you'll get light and you'll get deliverance and direction. That's the way to walk. As Elohim has given to each a measure of belief. So we've all been given a measure of belief. Everyone's different. Everyone has different gifts. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So here, here's the creativity coming in. Here's the difference. Everyone can be different. They don't have to be the same and it's okay. So we, the many, are one body in Messiah and members each one of another. 
So how should we be considering each other? Greater than ourselves. Well, it should be a deep, compassionate love. And people get jealous about it, Mark, don't they? You know, we talked about the love that you and I have, we've had for years, and it doesn't matter wherever we are, it's gay, mate, you know, it's real. Mm. You know what I mean? Same as we've got with Lou. Yeah. And now Adam's coming in. The more people, and, and what's that guy's name? The guy that sounds like, sings like, sounds like the guy that sings the toot toot. Don't mess with my toot toot. Colin. Colin. How are you, Colin? <laughs> It's lovely to see you and your wife. I haven't watched it all yet, but I want to finish it. Fantastic, Colin. Yeah, Don't mess with my toot toot. <laughs> the second one just went online too. <laughs> oh, great. I have to see it. I better hurry up and catch up. <laughs> so we are the many. We, the many, are one body in Messiah and members of each other, of each each of one another. Verse 6, now having different gifts according to the favour, the gifts come from his favour, which was given to us, let us use them accordingly. So everyone's going to have a, a gift to do this or to do that. Isn't it wonderful? You can ring up and say blah, 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 and you'll get the answers, won't you? Mm. That's how the body works. If prophecy according to the proportion of belief, and we can also warn each other about what this is happening and what's happening. You know how upset people got with our networking, Mark? Mm. They didn't like it because the, everything was bought out, wasn't it? Mm. <clears throat> but we don't network for that. We're just warning each other, mm. keeping everything well, as we were coming through to where we are now. People want to call it gossip because they don't want their deeds, <coughs> true yeah, motivations. No, no. Well, a bit more. I want to hear a bit more. <laughs> oh, well, you know, people just want to stay. You're on a roll, Mark. Go. <laughs> yeah. No, See. We, we don't like that gossip. You know, you know, when you look at them, though, they're, the, they're, accusing, they're accusing us of everything they were doing. But they were the ones that were having, holding back and hiding all these sneaky motivations. And they'd say things to people and they didn't expect them all to talk. Because if everybody talks about one another, that's gossip. You know, it's not gossip if you just say, gee, did you see that the other day? <laughs> and the other person goes, yeah, I saw that too. I, oh, they did that to me too. Oh, what's going on with them? It's not gossip, that's networking. <laughs> the well, we, were coming, we were coming out of Christianity mm. into, a, into this mindset. Oh, wasn't it excruciating? Oh, what they were doing and saying about us. It's like what we've read through, what we, we went through, what we've read. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But who wants to be in another place than this? We just want more of this. Yeah. How wonderful is this? Mm. You know? Yeah. So is that you got to say any more? Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> That was cool too. <laughs> See, Adam, you just say it off the cuff, mate. We want off the cuff. Yeah. Verse 7, if it's in serving, well, then in the serving. Or he who is teaching, in the teaching. You've got the gift, get in there and do it. Or he who encourages, in, in the encouragement. Or he who is sharing, in sincerity. So if you're sharing this truth, you're doing it sincere. I hope I'm sincere, brothers and sisters. I hope you can feel it. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mark? That's funny. <laughs> yeah. He who is leading <clears throat> in diligence. He who shows compassion joyously. <clears throat> Pardon me. And as we get to know our brothers and sisters in the body, we're going to know their gifts and those gifts will be useful to everyone. We can get on the Skype and, and whiz around and have a chat and say, oh, guess what's happening and blah, blah, blah. You know, all according to Torah, not gossip. <coughs> Here it is. Hey? 
It's interesting, uh, over the years and even still today, you get people who say, oh, I don't have a gift, you know. I don't have a gift, you know. Do you know how refreshing it is to have somebody actually physically pull out their keyboard and type something lovely on it? Because nobody does that these days. But somebody to say, that really touched my heart, brother or sister. That was really encouraging to me. Keep going, that's wonderful, you know. You don't get yeah. much of that. Like, yeah. that's how I got to know Craig and Kathy. Craig, all he says is nice <laughs> stuff. Mm. And I still haven't had the chance to actually email him as I want to and say, who are you? <laughs> Where do you live? What do you, you know, and I want to, just find the time. But all I know about him is that he's, every time we upload something, there's something encouraging there. That's a gift. Yeah. You know? Serving, it says there, is a gift. Yeah. You know, like people that just look at, you know, people who are doing all this stuff and they think, oh, I can't do that. Well, you know, nobody's asking you to start learning a guitar or something. That, you know, I learned that when I was eight. You know, you, you know that's you're not expected to do stuff like that. If, everybody's got a gift. Like, I can't do what you do. <laughs> no way. You can juggle five conversations at once and still know what everybody's doing. Oh, that overwhelms me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's amazing to me. It's wonderful, mate. So everyone knows, yeah. gets to know each other. Yeah. And gets to know that it's the same love. Yeah. You know? It's the same love coming through all of us. Mm. You know? Yeah. Everyone's on different levels and they can only give it as they can give it, so we don't worry. It's okay. Everyone has to be free and everyone has to understand, mm. you know, that it's okay. You can make a mistake. Okay, don't worry about it. Let's get up and go on. Yeah. See here in verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy. <clears throat> Shrink from what is wicked. Shrink. Don't rise up, in other words. Cling to what is good. <clears throat> in brotherly love, tenderly loving towards one another in appreciation giving preference to each other. <coughs> Go on, Mark. Same. Just just rewind this a little bit, about three minutes, <laughs> and play it again. Same spiel. It's amazing. In, in brotherly love. Yeah. <coughs> tenderly loving towards one another. Mm. You love that, mate, don't you? Yeah. You love giving that. Yeah, I, I started to well up before when you were reading the scripture and you just you just looked straight in the camera and said to Adam, I'm proud of you, mate, you know. I started to well up, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what you said. You said, I'm sure your father is proud of you, mate. You yeah. Said, I am, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never had anybody say that to me, except you when I met you. No, nobody talks. You know I love you and I'm proud of you, mate. Yeah, nobody you talks. You've got to let the hurt go. Yeah. <coughs> you don't need that hurt in you. No. <coughs> you can see by this that this is how Yahusha expects us to behave. Yeah. If someone doesn't behave like this, obviously they don't know. Mm. And how sad is that's sadder than your hurt, mm. isn't it? Yes. To think that they don't know the love that you know, mm. that's sadder than your hurt, mm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we can look at, oh, how sad, and not think about our hurt, mm. but think about the fact that they don't know mm. and that you might be able to do or say something to reach them. But this is what he wants in the body first. The body has to achieve <clears throat> tenderly loving towards one another, brotherly love, tender, tenderly loving towards one another, in appreciation, giving preference to each other. Just the most beautiful words you could read, aren't they? They just lift your heart. Oh, wouldn't it be? Won't it be wonderful when we get there? 
This is how everyone's going to be, mate, because you have to pass the test to get like this. And you're going to be living and mixing with people that are this mature, that mean it. How joyous is that going to be? How happy is that going to make everybody? And you look at the world today and it's violence yeah. everywhere. Look at those young people, Adam. You see those shows on television, the drinking and the sex and everything that's going down, mate. Oh, please, somehow reach them. <clears throat> Verse 11, not idle in duty, ardent in spirit. That means really going for it, serving the master. Rejoicing in the expectancy, enduring under pressure. This is what we have to achieve. We have to be able to endure under pressure, you know. We have to win, not to let stuff come out that's wrong. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. That's another thing. Just bring everything into your relationship while you're talking and walking and working. Just bring that conversation with Yahushua with you wherever you go. He'll give you the advice and what to say and do and you're just rolling with him. And it's up to us to believe that that's possible. And he's telling us tonight that's possible. And we need to get used to being treated like that because we've been used to being treated like a dog. The system treats us like a dog. The Satan and, and the whore, the circus, treat us like a dog. But Yahushua is different. That's why the immersion in his name brings you into such a different experience. Never was in Christianity, there's always empty and dead and angry. But this gives you peace. Yahushua gives you peace because we know his name. We know that's true. Once we know, recognize the true name, you know, you got the knowledge, you're right, you're free. Imparting the needs of the, of the set apart spirit. Well, sorry. <clears throat> Imparting the needs of the set apart ones pursuing kindness towards strangers. That's our lot, brothers and sisters. Are you pursuing kindness towards strangers? In spite of what's going on, maybe they're trying to rip you off or whatever, but you are pursuing kindness. You're reaching out all the time. This is the behaviour that will give you peace. This is the behaviour that will give you love and understanding. And you won't have any worries because your concern is for others, not yourself. Mm. And here it goes, verse 14. <clears throat> Bless those who persecute you. That's what you do. You don't carry on and get upset. You bless them. Bless and do not curse. See? Mm. This is the behaviour the body needs to come into. We need to have tender loving towards our brothers and sisters so that we all know it's right, it's good. This is what the, the Master wants for us, to experience his love flowing amongst us so the body's healthy. Rejoice with those who rejoice. You've got to be able to go in there and be happy for everyone not angry and jealous like we see in the body and weep with those who weep. Go in there. Go in there and have compassion. You know, put yourself aside and think how they feel, oh, what they're going through. Oh, sometimes people just can't get over that fence, you know. Be of the same mind towards one another. So we have different gifts, brothers and sisters, but we have to be of the same mind towards one another. Yeah. Yeah. None of this carry on and getting on the chat shows and saying a dirty little bit and then 
rubbishing someone and coming back and checking what they are saying, angry, 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 it's a waste of time, it's useless. You're not, you're, not, you, you're not holding anything. And if someone tunes in and they see that these people are supposed to be this way, miss out badly, you're not going to win people. But if we behave like this, we're going to see the lost spirits coming in, you know. No souls. There's no such thing as a soul. It's spirit or breath. But in the scripture, they don't talk about a soul. There's no such thing. That's pagan mindset. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not be proud in mind. But go along with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Go along with the lowly. Let them have it, Mark. Repay no one evil for evil. It's not the way to go. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. Okay, let it be. If possible on your part, be at peace with all men. You can be. Beloved, do not revenge yourself, but give place to the wrath. For it has been written, vengeance is mine. I shall repay, says Yahuwah. And if you stay back and you don't want to go and get somebody back and you wait on Yahusha, you'll see something happen. You'll see him move. But he wants us in that mindset where we're willing to take it, cop it and bless the people that are cursing us and do good to them and then he's going to move. And when you're in a place where you're seeing Yahusha move all the time, it is so wonderfully exciting. You're living a whole different life and you're in touch. He's in the midst of his people. And if you're not experiencing that, you're missing out. <laughs> Verse 20, instead, if your, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. For in so doing, you shall what, Mark? Heap coals of fire on his head. Now, can you imagine hot coals on your head? Oh, wouldn't that hurt? Uh, they do. I felt it. <laughs> well, if you if you behave like this, you'll be seeing all sorts of powerfully amazing things happen. But because the body won't catch it, and they're disobedient, and they want to have their own way and then don't want to be this way and be willing to be a living sacrifice. Living means it's constant. So we're constantly being sacrificed for him. And you're letting everybody have it and you're going through all this. You're going to see amazing things happen. But the body's too stupid at the moment and too self-centred and chasing the world and chasing religion and wanting to form their own religion and be the top dog. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to talk about knowledge and wisdom in the world at the moment, there aren't too many men that have that. I would say Lou White would be one of the top dogs, but he wouldn't have that. He wouldn't have that, but we can know that. He's a wonderful elder, loving man, and he's doing great things in Yahusha. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's it. Now, do not be, do not be overcome by evil. Here we are in the body with Yahushua in us. Evil is coming to us and wants to tempt us and overcome us and make it, us do its will rather than us do Torah. That's the battle in the mind. Evil wants to control us and make us do its bidding. But Yahushua gives us the opportunity to choose. 
And he says, don't let evil overcome you. Even a child can do this. You know how you don't let evil come out, overcome you? What did, how did Victor give up cigarettes years and years ago? What did she say? To the next cigarette, she said? No. And that's the word you use. Say yes when you mean yes and no when you mean no. Yeah. And you win. You win. Yeah. You win. You beat evil. It can't get you. It can't have you or control you. You win through Torah, through this simple instruction. Even a child can do it. A child can beat evil. Yeah? Mm. Oh, brothers and sisters, I just pray that this word is a blessing to you and it's going to give you light and health and release you. Oh, please, Father, bless the body so it becomes what you want it to be. Mm. So be it. So be it. Okay, Marky? You want to have a rave? A rave. Rave on. I'm asking for your opinion, mate. What do you think? Oh, it's just so uh, refreshing to come around the word. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, it, re it really does take on, if you have the mindset of the word is just knowledge then <coughs> you can say to yourself i don't feel like knowledge today i know enough but if you look at the word as life um yeah you read it and you have it uh, it burns you. you you feel this heat you think oh i'm not doing that oh i know that but i forgot about it oh yeah that's right remember when i thought i should do that i forgot about that yeah, and you're having this conversation with yourself while someone's reading the word and you think, I need to go here more often. It's it's um, You can either wallow in it and run yourself down or you can be intelligent about it and say, well, that's not the purpose you, you, who was talking to me here. Uh, just tapping me on the shoulder there. Remember that bit you said? Yeah, no, you're not doing that, are you? You're not doing that. You're not doing that. Um, it's really refreshing. You know, uh, you feel like you're in a relationship with him rather than just uh, uh, working for him or a servant. Or a, you feel like it's more real. It's life. So therefore, the, therefore the Torah, the Scripture becomes something that gives you life in a day, not something that's just going to make you more intelligent or more knowledge. Because that's not motivation for me to go to the Word. Because I. I you know, in my mind, they go, yeah, I know enough, that's fine. I know enough to get by. If it's just knowledge, we well, yeah, look at the people with knowledge and look at how they behave. You know, it's not about knowledge, but if you look at it as life, you think, I've got to come here more often. I've got to be in this all the time. And even when I'm not in it, I have to be uh, chewing on it in my head. And like you said, bringing, um, bringing him into all my thoughts and conversations. And I do regularly, but not enough for me, you know. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's and it's amazing to me the things that we're flowing into and the directions he's leading us into and doors he's opening up and relationships he's allowing to happen. Like it's really encouraging. Like he's leading us, but at the same time, the things he leads you into can also take up time, and you can forget about him sometimes. You. And he's the most important thing, you know. Uh, so, so these are encouraging for me, you know. And before That's you, wonderful, Ma. Yeah, before you come around the world, I think, oh, please don't hurt me, Father. This is going to hurt. <laughs> this is going to hurt. This is going to be. That's what. That's what you hear. That's what the birds. That's, that, that's what you hear. Really? Yeah. yeah, this is going to be heavy. Oh, this is. Gonna, I'm going to get hot. I'm going to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, I've got dregs of Christianity still in me. <laughs> the sermon. <laughs> Did you get hurt? No, it's not like that. No? No. Did you get hurt? No. Well, there you are. Not at all. 
You don't have to worry about that one anymore. No. Mm, that's life. Area Pegas. <laughs> Pegas. Yeah. Right now there's a new movie coming out called Prometheus. Is there? Yeah. yeah there is too. It's a spaceship. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have said that name. I should have spelled it. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I just got excited because that's what we used to call your son, didn't we? Yeah, Micah. We can't call him that now. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, it's just a name, isn't it? It's not, is it a, it might be a GD. Yeah, I'd say it is. No. Oh. Sounds like one. Well, that's wonderful to hear you speaking like that. Yeah. That's just fantastic, you know? Yeah. Oh, Mark. And um, routine and order, like you said, he wants the body in order. I think he wants <laughs> our, our homes and our bodies and our, like you said, living offering, you know? Mm. Say no to the next hamburger. <laughs> yeah. Because too many hamburgers late at night make you make you wake up feeling like a junkie in the morning and then you start getting angry when children run in and wake you up and you because you're high on drugs and people don't realise that uh, what's in the food is just the same as what's in... Uh, that's what Amy was saying the other day. She was saying something she researched that said... Um, Cocaine in its purest form is good for you, but what mankind does to it, the refining process and the bleaching and the chemicals mm. are what make it what it is. And she said, well, the exact same thing is the same as sugar. <coughs> Pure sugar is okay, but what the, the refining process is, um, mm. I just thought of that. It's, uh, mm. Bleaching, same with flour the, and bread and all that, the bleaching and the chemicals and the, you know. It's like being on cocaine. You wake up and you, your eyes, you can't open, you can't see and you, you feel like you're hungover. I don't Can know. I ask you a question? Yeah. Where would you go to get a hamburger at night? Oh, I don't go at night. I don't have a car right now. <laughs> I know, but you just said when you have a hamburger at night. I just mean you have hamburgers during the day or you eat junk food at night, you know. You mean Maccas or you mean a hamburger, like an Aussie burger? Either, either. Maccas has got more chemicals in it, I'm sure, because you get addicted. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I used to get really addicted. I could go five days in a row for lunch and you're addicted. And because you're not eating properly and you're on the computer all the time, you just. He wants his body in order because you can't, it affects your behaviour. In more ways than what we realise, eh? Yeah. yeah so beautiful. just doing, doing these studies is beneficial, eh? Yeah. Very just looking at the body, all the parts. Mm. And if you behave a certain way and feed yourself spiritually and physically a certain way, your children do the same thing. They watch your behaviour. They think it's acceptable. They're taking in the food and the drugs as well. So they're bouncing off the walls and they're abusive. And before you know it, you've got a house that's just in chaos. Mm. And you're ripping your hair out going, what's the answer? What's the answer? And everybody's bouncing emotions off one another and angry. And you realise the answer has been right in front of you the whole time. Yeah. The Torah. Bring the Torah in. Bring order in. Yeah. Bring discipline in. Yeah. So. Love. Love. Yeah, love. Most importantly. So, that's really that's cool. wonderful, Mark. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Fantastic, eh? Yeah. So, amazing. Very encouraging. <laughs> that's what we want. Yeah. So all you little tapeworms out there, <laughs> we just hope it's going to be beneficial. Yeah. All those people that have... You know, the 49th look or the 50th look. Why don't you write something and say something to us? Yeah. Make contact yeah. instead of having a sneaky little look. <laughs> yeah. Come and meet us and say something to us. Yeah. We'd love it. Mm. Yeah, the, the, the body has to be more connected globally. <coughs> Well, you know, when you get onto the YouTube, there's just so much rubbish everywhere. How are people going to find us? 
unless we have a big body of work and it's going through all different areas. And he wants the body to speak out. Yeah. Oh, it's so, you've got to be so careful online. Even today I was looking for funny pictures to put on a page somewhere and there was a site that had all these funny pictures on it. Oh, this is great. And then you scroll down a little bit and the funny pictures start getting more, you know, and I just thought to myself, this is starting to get, like, this is not acceptable. Like, I'm looking for funny pictures and, and moves and, like, cats and dogs and things like that. And you scroll down a bit and then there's naked people and you just go, this is not acceptable. And I start feeling this burning inside me and I was like, get out of there, got to get out of there, you know. It's like, you've got to be so careful. Online, you can one minute you're here and the next minute you just, you know, and you're at work. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. this stuff is online all the time. Yeah. So I'll meet with Amy at lunch and say, oh, I've got a, I got a smack today, you know, because I just, you know, like, cause you're there and you feel unclean. I don't yeah. even like looking at stuff like that anymore. You know, I just think you just feel unclean. And yeah. and the more, the more second, the more seconds you choose to linger and say, oh, no, that's not that bad. The more seconds you linger there, the more it burns. And then you click it off and you think, um, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm in the middle of, you know, five projects trying to get stuff done. I'm not on, not my purpose is not to go searching for porn. You know? <laughs> it's like I'm, mm. I'm trying to do stuff here and this stuff, this stuff comes in your way all the time. Well, you overcame it with, with good, didn't you? Yeah. <coughs> uh, I have a bit of a thing with Amy. I said, oh, I can't stand this thing. I feel unclean. I've seen stuff I shouldn't have seen. And she said, oh, don't worry. You know, she's bored with it just like I am. But it's um, just when you said the airways, you just got to be so careful. And it's very easy to be um, conformed to the world and think it's okay. But, um, and even Nat Sarim have said it is okay. And I don't agree because what's this pain I'm feeling? <laughs> mm. You know, what's this pain when you feel unclean? You know, like, and I find the minute I say something to him, it's gone. Because Satan likes to say, oh, that's not important. You don't need to say anything about that. And it is very important to to keep your conscience clean, you know, to mm. stay fresh, you know. Mm. And so I realised, you know, and the pictures I was looking for, it didn't actually work on the page I wanted to work on anyway. So then I realised that was a waste of time anyway. I didn't have to go there. I won't, mm. go, there, won't go to that site again. It was the first time I'd heard about that site. And I thought, oh, forget that. I don't want that, you know. Mm. So can't, you've got to be so careful. There's something about be like a child, isn't it, when you're around evil and just run away? Shrink from yeah. evil. Yeah, said shrink from evil, evil, run away. Which is what you did. Mm. And that's a wonderful message to all the young people out there. Yeah. You know, Satan wants to get you. Mm. Another good thing was, I think, was that in Lou's talk that he said we shouldn't have conversations with spirits. Yes. Don't have conversations with them. Don't listen to them. Shrink from them. Another inter interesting thing, uh, <coughs> uh, Colin said. I think in the, the last time I spoke to him, because he used to, he was tr he after he left Christianity, he went into magic and was studying that. And he said the same. There's there's no difference between a spell and a prayer. So people say, oh, I'm not a witch. I don't cast spells or whatever. But if you're praying or talking to spirits, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same as a spell. Nancy. That's true, mm. Colin. Yeah, that's true, Colin. Yeah. He, I, every time I see him, I think of that Toot Tooth song. <laughs> it's, his voice sounds so much like that guy that sings it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with my Toot Tooth. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, I think it's been a wonderful night, mate. Yeah. Yes. Let you get home and get some sleep, eh? Yeah. yeah. What do you reckon? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. We're going to say goodbye to all the brothers and sisters. Goodbye, all the brothers and sisters. And tell them we love them so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speak out. Don't be afraid. Mm. You too, Adam. <laughs> you too, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, boss. Yeah. Okay, mate. Love you, mate. See ya. Yeah. See you Bye. later. See ya.